Seriously, what are you doing? Certainly was close enough. The phrase you're looking for is we are not amused. They can, he can override the steering, can't he? That's what I always found when Jasper had this thing. Look, look, touch it. Not impressed. Good boy, Dexter, good boy. He's definitely got the hang of actually driving it now, hasn't he? Got a notification last night, which I completely forgot I got saying that there's a software update available. I like software updates. Probably isn't anything exciting. Just a bug fix, I would have thought. But still, let's get that set off. Right, so, I'd forgotten I've got a software update. So I'm just gonna do that quickly. Because when, it, when it's applying software updates, they often, like, the car sort of stops working, basically. I'm personally going to use the time to do that little bit of skateboarding practice. Don't normally do it with this camera, so, um, be a bit careful because this is the big heavy one. Getting my uh, boarding practice in, trying to get a bit more familiar with uh, this sort of thing. I like I like anything we have to balance. Yeah, Jasper's actually a bit crazy when it comes to cars. Check this out. Are you dancing? Yay! Woo! Where are ya? That kid's mad. Almost as crazy as his daddy, which is really saying something. I feel like I'm slowly getting uh, a bit more familiar with this again now. The thing is, if you don't put in a bit of practice with it, you can't use it when you want to. And it is damn convenient having a small vehicle that you can call on whenever you want. And you don't get a lot smaller than a penny board. Time to find out if the car has finished updating. Okay, so it says software update complete, checking status. Definitely isn't bad exercise, this skateboarding. Maybe that's just my inefficient technique. Do they call it skateboarding if it's a penny board or is it penny boarding? Load and go time. So we've got a software update problem. It's, yeah, it doesn't seem to, it's frozen. I mean, the door's still open and the boot still opens. The screen is confused and says software update, checking status. Now, the problem I've got is it's not yet been 45 minutes. I don't want to do like a hard reset in, if it's like in the middle of updating. So, yeah, I might just give Tesla a quick ring. Vehicle and its functions, press three. Let's try three. Hi, um, I just hit update on my Tesla um, a little while ago and I've opened the door and it says um, installation complete checking status, but everything's frozen and it won't sort of do anything else. I'm just right. Board. Okay, so I'm the, the, just the key point board. here is we wait. All right, thanks very much then. Cheers. Bye. It normally, it normally doesn't take very long, but uh, I, I obviously should have allowed more time for it. The car has just finished updating, and basically all I needed to do was wait. So it's a good thing I didn't do a hard reset, which I was seriously considering doing, so there you go. When updating anything, always remember to wait. I did know that anyway, so that kind of saved us. I also shouldn't have set an update, an update off. 10 seconds before we were going to be leaving. No. We are now no. ready to hit the road. Oh, There's really nothing to it when you're doing a sort of 80, 90 mile drive. Not in a Tesla anyway. I preferred it when you had to plan and charge. Okay, so now once I've got the bags out of the car, 
we'll have a look at my editing workflow. So this is the first thing I've got to do whenever I want to edit, is to take the shots from the this camera, the one that's currently I'm currently shooting with, which is a Lumix GF7, and because it's shooting in 50 frames, I need to turn it all into 30 frames a second footage. Otherwise, Premiere Pro somehow manages to mess up the audio sync. This is step one. It takes about 20 odd minutes, but on the upside, I don't actually have to be here whilst it's doing that. I can go and have a cup of coffee. Okay, so now this is done. Go into Premiere Pro, open the project, hit Command I for import, then I select the resources that I want to import into the project. Okay, so the first thing I do is I take a clip from my Canon 70D, drop it in here, which creates the initial timeline for me, uh, though I'm actually not going to keep that in there, because on this particular one, as luck would have it, I didn't actually use the 70D at all. So just make sure this is all organised by name, select them all, drag them over here, give it that, close that gap. And at the end of this, I'll drop in the stuff that came from my Hero 4 session, which tends to be all the sort of time lapsey stuff as I'm driving along. Okay, so now I've got all my footage like this. Uh, all this footage, I'm going to want the whole lot to be sped up, so first thing to do is cut these down to good time lapse sort of length, frame blending, ripple edit so it closes down the gaps and there we go. What I do next is I do the colour grading if you like, so to try and make these two shots seem similar to each other and similar to all the other cameras, what I do is I put in an adjustment layer, new adjustment layer, okay and then I drag that over there. I stretch it out until it covers the whole lot. Yeah, let's put the colours on, put the uh, basic colour correction on this. I'm going to put that four. Increase the contrast. Pump up the colourisation a bit. Try and get rid of some of the windscreen effect that's going on otherwise. And then I do this one. This one needs a lot less colour and less contrast, but I do like to add a bit. Here we go. Okay, awesome. Now, you see how it's red along the top here? The reason it's red there is because what it's saying is that the computer is not fast enough to play this footage with these effects in real time. So what we want to do is render previews on all of this footage. And the other thing I want to do just to sort of keep myself organized is change the colours on some of this stuff. So I'll change that to Caribbean, which is what I normally use for uh, anything that I've sped up. And I'll change the colour on this to Cerulean, the colour that I usually use for the Lumix footage. So there's two ways to start the pre-rendering process. I can either go to Sequence and render, into, uh, render Effects In Out, which will basically render anything which has got a red bar along the top here which is everything in this case, or what I can do is just press return. And as you'll see, it's going to take a fair old amount of time. So that's my cue to do some family time. And then I'll come back. This will have finished its preview rendering and then I will be able to watch all the footage nice and smoothly. And one of the reasons why I do the preview rendering is because the 4K footage that comes from the uh, Hero 4 Black Edition can't be played smoothly even if you haven't put the uh, any colour corrections on it yet. And the other problem is that if you don't put the colour corrections in right at the beginning, because I'm basically doing it by camera, what ends up happening is you have 150 different cuts and each little section needs a different colour correction based on what the camera is. It's just easier to apply those colour corrections when the footage from each camera is, is all still together, if you see what I mean. Alright, well I'll see you in a couple of hours then. Bye! Okay, 
So I have no actual idea how this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. I've got the screen recording thingy. Basically, the idea now is I run through all the footage and I cut out the bits I obviously don't want, whilst at the same time taking the footage from the various different sources and lining it up in chronological order in this sequence. So let's do that. You might have noticed that it's actually the next day. This is fairly typical for me when it comes to my editing workflow. Probably not the best, but that is often the way it works out. So what that means is I'm actually just going to take a short break because we're going to the to another one of these country show things. They seem to just crop up all the time in England in the summer. What is it? We are definitely a bit late. in there, making sure you're all strapped in. Jasper, look at Daddy. Home time now. Do you have fun, Jasper? Yes. <laughs> and we're home. Time to get back on with the editing. So where was I? Yes, that's right. I was going through getting all the clips that I wanted. So I'm gonna carry on with that now. There were a few bits of footage I took while I was skateboarding where I just need to rotate that 180 degrees, which means I need to redo the previewing. That's my first pass where I cut out all the stuff I definitely don't want. Then I go through again and I make sure that it's going to tell the right story and I get rid of any duplication in what I'm saying, any bits that I don't need. I pick the best shots from things like when I was on the skateboard or waiting in the queue at McDonald's or whatever. By doing that, hopefully I wind up with a sort of a 10 minute or so reasonably watchable video. Then I run through it for a third time and I just trim all the fat out of it. All the bits that I don't think really contribute anything, they go up. And then we put the music on. We'll get to that in a minute. We're gonna wait for this to render first. So now the preview rendering is finished, it's time to do that next pass and just make sure that I've not got any duplication and sort of hopefully cut it down from 17 minutes to more like 10. Something I just forgot to mention, as I go through I do mark in different colours certain sections of the sequence, so you know I tend to mark the red bits will be my sort of outro if you like and that way I know if I've got lots of those, it's a problem and, you know, bits that need special attention still, I'll mark as orange and things that are time-lapse or sped up footage, I tend to mark in a sort of Caribbean green. And then I'll sort of, you know, try and mark different scenes which have a series of uh, clips within them. I'll try and mark those all in, in one colour each scene so that you can just sort of get a feel for how it's moving along. And there we go, it's down to 10 minutes now, so <sighs> I've got the vast majority of the editing done. Now it's just a case of getting some music and putting the cuts in the right places so that they sort of fit with the music. Go through and I just make sure that, you know, when you've got a beat or, you know, this is the music fits with where the cut points are. And also I need to sort of dip the volume down if I'm speaking so we don't have sort of just music clashing with voice too much. Right, I think I should just explain a little bit of what's going on here. So when it comes to putting in the music, I've added it into this track at the bottom here, as you can see. And I don't want music in this bit. I do in this bit, so this line here 
tells you sort of what volume. I've adjusted the audio of the music so that it more or less is a sort of a comfortable volume versus the voice. It, it, it's your own feel. What, what do you like? What do you, how do you like the music? Right, now, I'm actually running seriously out of time, so I'm, I'm gonna turn off the camera and, and concentrate on what I'm doing, and I'll need to stop the recording anyway, because when it comes to rendering, that's gonna take like, ah, ages. Basically, that's it. There's a preset for YouTube 1080p. You just select that and uh, the export button. I'll show you that quickly. So you go File, Export Media, and you can just set this to down here at the bottom, 1080p HD, or whatever other sort of various settings you, you want to put it on. I'm by no means an expert in this sort of thing whatsoever. So I'm not going to do that yet because I've still got to put the rest of the music on and uh, I'm running like seriously, seriously short of time. Ah, sorry. So I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it and subscribe if you haven't already and share it. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. Mm.